So a few weeks ago, I'm just sitting there minding my own business and I get an alert from Google because I have it set up in my computer system that if the name Allison Sharp comes up on Google, I get an email, which is a kind of cool thing because, you know, you should do that for yourself as well. But since I'm on YouTube, I always want to know if somebody's making another video with my video or whatever, whatever. So I'm minding my own business and I get an alert which is kind of exciting because I haven't had an alert in a long time, if I'm being honest. It's an article that was written about me in the U.S. Sun. Now, I don't really follow that publication, but I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Let me see what it's all about. I'm going to show you what the article says. And I think it was like that same day. No, it was like a couple days later, I get another alert. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so popular. (sighs) It was an alert that there was an another article written in the New York Post. And I'm like, is it because I'm in New York? But because at the time I was in New York. And I was like, I am so YouTube famous. Everyone's just writing about me now. Even though the US Sun wrote a pretty decent article, the New York Post did me a little dirty. So let's go over both of them. The second one I want to dig into a little bit more and see what your thoughts are, because this is a really good time to show how the media gets in and just twists things around and makes things look different than they actually are. So let's check it out. All right, here's the article. Let me make it bigger. And basically they used my picture and it says, watch the video. And then they used an image of some other van lifers that I don't know, but cute dog. If you click this, you get my... I always post all these pictures of... And, you know, it's called not so fantastic. I quit my nine to five job to live my dream life in a van. I was sold a lie and don't get me started on the cost by Kate Coolness. And that was on July 12th. So basically it's just a summary of my video that I made back in September of 2022 called the five lies of van life that nobody talks about. And they used some clips from my videos. I do appreciate that they linked my YouTube channel in here. So that's kind of cool. Now I see what they did here. They like this line right here. This is one that I wrote on my about page in YouTube. So they probably just scraped the system and maybe even use some AI. I don't know, but basically I put this in my about page. So I think they're just copying a lot of the stuff and just repurposing it. A lot of these things are things I actually said in the video when I said I felt I felt very heat strokey. I mean, they definitely took it out of my video, which is fine. Now, one of the things that I wanted to mention is that I did not get any messages from anybody asking if they can make an article. And I mean, anybody can write an article on anybody. Anybody can make a video on anybody. That's free speech, all the things, whatever. And so this is basically a summary of stuff that I said in my video. Now, they could have used a better picture here, to be honest. And they got a picture of my prunes sitting out there. I mean, if that doesn't make me feel kind of old, I don't know what will. At the end of the day, I feel like this article was pretty accurate, which is fine. Hey friend, are you new? If so, why don't you just become part of the snack pack by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you might as well throw a like on it. But like I said, two days later, here comes the New York Post, and I was like, okay, cool, I wonder what they're writing about. And it was basically the exact same thing, except they kind of went in a different direction. Let me show you. All right, on this one, it's under the travel section and it says, I quit my job to live my dream life in a van. It's hard. I feel like that makes me sound like I'm a ding dong. And I'm like, bro, like if you watch more of my videos or that video, I mean, yeah, van life is hard, but I wasn't like thinking that this was going to be the dream life. I don't think I ever said that in any of my videos that I was like, this is my absolute dream. But I mean, here, at least they link to my actual video. The thumbnail is exactly the same one of that video. Um, but right off the bat, they're like living the van life was supposed to be a high, but it felt more like taking the low road. I feel like that's a little bit demeaning or not demeaning, but like makes it sound like bottom of the barrel, like you're living like a lower standard or low class life. A woman quit her safe nine to five job to live her dream, but it turned out to be a nightmare. All right, listen, I got some things to say about that. Let me clear that up. Let me, let me see what this link goes to. It's another article. I quit my corporate nine to five to travel the world. Now I live on a yacht. So that's somebody else's thing. Brooke Steinberg wrote on July 12th, and I think it posted on the 14th, or at least I got the alert on the 14th. Basically, she just wrote whatever she wanted to write. When she's saying uh, a woman quit her safe 
nine to five job to live her dream. First of all, living in a vehicle wasn't my dream. Traveling was my dream. And I just wanted to do it in a way that I could save money and not have to diminish all the savings that I had from working that safe job. Now, in terms of it being a safe job, I wouldn't even say it was a safe job. I was at that job for 11 years. I started out at a decently low wage. I was there and I rarely got an increase. And by the time I was like in my 10th and 11th year, I was like, bro, like, we're not even an industry standard for what I'm doing and how long I've been here. So I wrote to the person that I kind of reported to and brought up like lots of facts and what my job description does and all the things, all the things. And I said, you know, I think it's more appropriate for me to be at the industry standard for this position. And she's like, if you think you can find it, go find it somewhere else. And I was like, all right, bet. So I took my two weeks vacation. And when I got back, I put my notice in. So to me, that's not safe. Safe is not working a job where they don't value your work. They don't value you as a person. They don't consider all your efforts. And I just got to that point where I was like, this is never going anywhere. It's like being in, in, in a, 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 a like an abusive relationship that you've been in way too long, or even just a regular relationship where you're like, are we ever going to get married? And you're hanging on year after year after year trying to prove yourself. And you're like, what am I doing this for? There's so many other opportunities out there. So if to that line, if anything was a nightmare, it was staying at that job that long. So I would encourage you if you're in a job that's going nowhere, quit it sooner than later and move on and do something better. Whether it is traveling, whether it's getting another job, whether it's doing something where you're going to be appreciated. Allison Sharp quit her job and gave up her home in California in 2019 to live life on the road. She lived in her car before buying her Chevrolet Express van, which she thought would be a dream, but came with a whole new set of problems she never thought about, which that's facts. You don't know until you know. So when you're embarking on something new, you can only go off things you've read or videos you've watched, but it's when it's actually happening in your life, then you learn things. The travel influencer who shares her adventures on her account, Travel Snacks, on YouTube, admitted what the van life is like as a solo female out on the road. Sharp is always looking for new food. And this is exactly from my about page again, but it's not as exciting as she thought it would be. And it's funny because these same lines, like look at the very heat strokey, I felt like I was going to pass out. It was just too much sweating constantly. These are things that was in the U.S. Sun article. So I'm like, are these people like plagiarizing each other or do they work together? You know, I don't, I don't know how that goes down in these journalistic situations, uh, but it's like a lot of this is just copy paste. These are just things I said in the video. They use the exact same picture as the other article. My prunes are still there. So a lot of this is true. Sharp admitted to having to constantly be on the move. It's hard on your body and also hard mentally. They used the same picture as the other article. And this is a lot from the other article. Same image from the other article. Now this one is questionable because I think I might have said something like this and kind of a joking way. Sharp has been living the van life for three years now and she truly believed it was something she would do her whole life. But she's now realizing this isn't the dream she thought it would be. I think I was like, I'm the type of person that when I'm embark on something, I'm like, I'm going to do this forever. Like it's kind of like I was kind of embellishing that part. I didn't really think I would do van life for the rest of my life into my golden years, but I see where they're going with this because I did, I think I did say it on one of my videos. So that's fair. This is pretty much just copy paste of the other one. Now, one of the things I want to share is people are just like writing these articles and kind of putting their little bit of spin on it, like especially in the beginning. But when people write articles like this, you know, you can watch one video of somebody's and not know their heart or know their, their thoughts or know their goals in life. And when I read this, it was actually kind of funny to me because I was just like, that's kind of taken out of context. Is that slander? I mean, Really, I'm just being funny. It's not that serious. Uh, because now if you even go on the New York Post or the US Sun, this this uh, article is buried. I mean, it's like so many other stories. I think they post like a bazillion stories a day. So no one's ever going to probably even see this or whatever. But it's just interesting how when you title things a certain way or you add a few little lines in of your own kind of writing flair how the readers of it are going to take it a certain way. And I totally get that as a creator, because when you do titles and thumbnails, you kind of push the line a little bit. But let's read some of these comments under this article, because people were pretty mean. And I was like, 
this is exactly what I am against is people just reading an article from the media, taking it for face value and then being like, kind of like crappy people. So there's six comments on this. Mo1946 says, I'm speechless. How could anyone be that oblivious? And it's like, does that person know that there's thousands of van life people, thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of RV, like, I don't know, I'm just making that statistic up. But there's many people that are snowbirds and living in RVs and cars and vans. So I don't know if that person's just saying, how can I be so oblivious to think that van life wouldn't be hard? I knew it was going to be hard. I wasn't unaware. I watched plenty of videos. And even though I was looking forward to living in a car in a van and like traveling and all this stuff, I knew there was going to be some difficulties and challenges. So just reading one article, it's like I wasn't oblivious. I knew it. But when you actually do it, I was sharing all the intricacies and all the things with my audience so that people know, like if you're interested in doing this type of lifestyle, that you'll know some of the, the things that maybe don't get pointed out in a lot of videos. The next one is from Ron Stryker. I thought people wanted jobs so they didn't have to live in a trailer. Go figure. I have a job, Mr. Ron. It's doing YouTube full time and sharing the different things in my life. So, I mean, that is my job. And I think a lot of people do have jobs that live on the road. I'd say most people do have jobs. It's just that it might not be a traditional go into the office every day, same job. A lot of nomads do various jobs or they'll drive for Uber Eats or Instacart or they'll work at the Amazon warehouse or they'll do seasonal work. So a lot of people that live in trailers and vans and cars like that, the nomad community takes care of themselves, like pays their bills. As far as I know, people I've met, they are all, you know, living non-traditional travel lifestyles, but they're living like they're still paying their bills and their way in life. So I don't know about that. Thomas Petrucci, in the words of John Wayne, life is hard and it's harder when you're stupid. <sighs> when people just resort to name calling, I'm like, improve your argument. Don't name call. Or they usually say like, don't raise your voice and prove your argument. But also if you have to resort to name calling or putting quotes about how people are stupid, how is it stupid to have traveled most of the United States meeting new people challenging yourself, growing as a person. Like, I don't see how that's stupid. Quenchy says, grass is always greener on the other side until you're on the other side. I mean, I will agree with Quenchy. That's true. And when you're living your regular old life, it's okay to want new things, to change and to explore. I guess that could be said that I thought grass would be greener on the nomad life. And for a while it was greener, but you can't do living in a vehicle your whole life. I mean, some people do, but I think people are going from grassy area to grassy area in their own life in general. Isn't that what life's about? Like you do something until it's not fulfilling anymore, then you move to something else that's not fulfilling. I think there is a line where you have to have discipline and commitment. But if there's something that is killing your soul, a job that doesn't appreciate you or whatever else, I don't know, there's millions of things, then there's nothing wrong with traveling or trying something new. Daniel Orlando, why not go all the way? Sell the van, buy a small tent and a good sleeping bag and a few pairs of shoes and just start hoofing it. You are already halfway to professional homelessness. You may as well pull the trigger and finally commit to being a full-time vagrant. So this is a pretty slippery slope kind of argument or comment because living in a van or a car and traveling by choice is a far cry from being homeless. And I don't really like when people use homelessness in the same token because homelessness is a real issue, a real true problem that a lot of people are facing. And it's demoralizing to to kind of be like, why don't you just be a full-on vagrant or homeless person? It's like, I don't think those people are choosing that. Maybe don't talk about it like that because that's being mean-spirited. I do understand where the comment is coming from, like, why don't you just go from living in a vehicle to just go living on the street if you want that? But that wasn't the point of my journey. That my point of my journey, the point of my journey was to travel kind of unhindered and to save money and to see a lot of things. And I did those things and it was great. And there was a lot of awesome, wonderful things, but it came to an end because I was like, okay, I've seen a lot of things and I'm, I'm, it's a point of diminishing returns. You know, you could only see so many beautiful things and then you're like, okay, I've seen it already. And then you want something different and that's okay. The last comment from Mike Oxlong. Who's the idiot from the post that considered this news? 
I guess they're talking about the, the person that wrote the article. It seems like this New York Post is, you know, like, even if you just type in, you know, van life, there's lots of different things that this website considers news. Like my doctor walked me down the aisle after I beat cancer. This is not even van life. Like it's all over the place. I sold my home for a facelift. Now I look fabulous, but live in a van. And I would imagine there's more to this story if you read it than just like a, you know, a title or a headline. So these types of sites, I think they're kind of like on the same path of the Inquirer, if you guys remember those, that publication, I don't know if that's still out. Um, not quite, but just like when I'm on Google, it'll serve me up like different news articles and they will be from sites like this. And it'll be like a thousand pounds of spaghetti was dumped on the side of the road or UFO sighting or like different weird things. So I'm not mad at these articles. It's like, it doesn't really matter. These publications are just posting thing after thing after thing as entertainment, as something to read. So for the person to be like, who thought this was news? I don't even think these are like real like hard hitting news sites. Like I think there is sections on those sites that are for more hard hitting news or like more wars and murders and things in the government. But they also fill it with different sections talking about entertainment and food and all these different things. So, you know, these people can write about whatever they want to write about. And I think they got it mostly right. But I think the parts that I am like, I mean, making it kind of sound like I embarked on this journey like a ding dong. And you know, sometimes I can be a ding dong. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I was like pretty eyes wide open about the whole thing and taking it one day at a time. I just thought this was interesting. I made it into the news, maybe in not the way that I wanted to, which would have been more positive leaning. But at the same time, I stand behind my videos because I think it's so important to share the good, the bad, and the ugly side of the nomadic lifestyle and any part of your life, like anything that you do in life, I think there's always going to be good and bad. And I think it's important that we share that with each other so that you can be more prepared in life. That's all I have for today. So until next time, bye for now. The other day, a few weeks ago, my picture, wait, hold on. Called the five lies of Van left that and gave up her home in Cal, but came with same. It's like I was, I, 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 what? Allison, can't even say my name. Snack time. Snack time.